this computer. Okay, there it goes. All right, we got it. Okay, let me go ahead and share this. Whoopsie, I just did the wrong thing. Hang on. Share. Almost ended the meeting for all. <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> hey, look at this. Boom, gone. <laughs> oh. Wrong button. Uh, all right, you ready? Can y'all see this? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch this. This is fun. Hi, guys. It's Stacey London, uh, formerly of What Not to Wear, now uh, CEO, CEO of State of Menopause. Um, I want to talk to all of you VIP happy hour achievers. Um, Elizabeth got in contact with me, Elizabeth Bishop, uh, because she wanted me to tell you what an incredible job you're doing, not just this month, but generally. And that all of your planning and all of your hard work have paid off. And I couldn't be more happy for you, especially coming out of the year that we've had. Um, I know that retail is going to be tricky and you guys are obviously kicking some butt. And clearly Elizabeth loves you for it and appreciates all of the hard work. Dedication like that is important in a company. And um, I'm so happy to be able to congratulate you on a job well done. So enjoy this moment. Uh, keep, you know, killing it. And lots of love for me and from Elizabeth. Mwah. <laughs> all right. So congratulations to all of you VIP happy hour achievers. We are really excited to share the next hour with you. And how fun to hear from a little celebrity who thinks you're hot stuff too. So. Um, okay, uh, and we can show it later if, um, for those who ended up missing it, because a couple people just hopped on in the middle of Stacey London showing up on our screen. Um, let's see, so let's play a little, a fun little game, a little icebreaker. Some of you got the word that we decided to play, um, two truths and a lie. Did y'all, for those of you who knew about that, say yeah, nod your heads, yes, if you knew about it. Okay, and if you didn't, it doesn't matter because you only need the next 15 seconds to figure it out, okay? Oh, good. Okay. So you guys are getting the whole Stacey London thing. Okay, good. I'm glad you like that. That's good. All right. So we're going to play two, two truths and a lie. And what I'm going to do is um, just randomly pick a name. And if you're ready, then what you'll do is type your two truths and your lie up on the chat. And we'll give everybody else um, oh, that's okay, Debbie. <laughs> Not everybody. Is, 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 is funny. <laughs> that's okay. Um, and you know, it's it's mostly us older girls who would know who she was, Debbie. So you know, hey, I'm I'm sure I'm your age. <laughs> that's okay. I'm letting you off the hook. Um, do you recommend watching, going out and checking out the reruns for TLCs, what not to wear, because it was really quite funny. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a great show. It's one of my all time favorite shows. Yeah, and there are lots of episodes. So you'll never you'll never run out of out of binge watching opportunities with that one. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through some of these to learn a little bit more about each other. We won't do everybody, but um, it'll be fun to see. So what you're gonna do is wait till I call your name, and then when it's your turn, you're gonna post three things about yourself. One is not true, and the other two are. Um, after I call your name and the rest of us will post which one we think is the lie. All right. All right. So I'm just kind of scanning the crowd and I think I'm going to choose Angie Colby. So Angie Colby, post your two truths and a lie. Are you ready? Okay. Posting. <laughs> You didn't know I could sing, did you? <laughs> Lounge singer. All right, she's typing away. It's coming. Ooh, we should have Julie Marinucci come on and serenade us. That would be really fun. We would like that. That'd be very fun. Any wedding singers in the crowd? I'm only a church singer. I'm not a wedding singer. The wedding singers are way better. I'm a shower and car singer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's how I am too, Debbie. So, <laughs> they may not want us singing, then I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Um, so Angie says, I love swimming in the ocean. I have 16 grandchildren, no, six, six. grandchildren. <laughs> and I've been married three times. 
All right, so which one do you think is the lie? You got about 10 seconds to say which one you think is the lie. Gosh, Angie, I feel like I knew you pretty well and I'm a little stumped. <laughs> it's a little of everything. It's all across the board. Uh -huh. Well, while you guys are guessing, I just want to share that I think if you were a mom, we always try to, you know, encourage our kids and let them have their own dreams. Speaking of singing, my mom told me that she didn't think I should be a singer. <laughs> that should just tell you guys <laughs> that you don't want me serenading you. I tell my kids that all the time. I'm like, you be anything you want. But my mom told me I couldn't be a singer. <laughs> That's too bad. All right. So it literally is all across the board. Yeah. So Angie. Oh, wait, maybe we should do tickets for the ones that get it right for our prizes. Should we do that for, to draw our prizes? We can let them keep um, keep track of which one, uh, of whether they got it right or not. Okay. Or do you want me to put their names on tickets? You can try, but that's that's tricky. Like kind of hard. Especially, okay. if, especially if we go verbal. If we decide okay. that this is going to take too long and we go verbal, then okay. Okay. Might, but I, I love I'll the idea. We go with it. Okay. But worst case, we can just draw random names for the prizes. That is true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> worst case, I do like I like the way you think. All right, Angie, Angie you're muted. She's muted. She can't, she's, yeah, we didn't hear any of that. Sorry. She's, she's speechless. Okay. Like Terry likes to create more work for herself. Well, I just like to have a system, a system. I call it a system, a working system. So here I started early. So the lie is the swimming in the ocean. No way. Um, the other two are true. And, <laughs> so you right, don't swim in the ocean. You have been married three times and you have six grandchildren. Yes, but the third time's a charm. We're almost 30 years. So. Aww, <laughs> yay. We love Jamie. He is a keeper for he sure. Is a keeper. He is a keeper. Let's see, do you think that um, we can have the person that you call out say something so we can see them on screen? Yeah, that's a great idea, Ramona. I yeah. I yeah. Didn't and actually, what. I love that idea. And since you just said that, I think you're next. <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, I don't know if you can see me. And in fact, yep, so we, we can see you. And so what, do you want to say the three things out loud and then we'll post yeah. what we okay. think it'll be? Okay. I have two children mm -hmm. this year who are getting married. I love to crochet. Okay. And I am a black belt. Wow. Hmm. And she said them all, like, do you guys like to look at her while she said them to see if she hesitates at all you want me to <laughs> yeah we can, we can spotlight her I know, I know. I was like, is she gonna hesitate is she gonna hesitate okay i just i'm spotlighting her okay so say okay, the that's crochet black belt and Sorry. two children getting married i'm gonna go with the crochet too do you think she loves to crochet i think she doesn't i think that's a lie okay that's my guess mm -hmm. okay. I want to room with her at the leader meeting if she is a black belt, because that's cool. <laughs> okay, are we ready? No, we'll give it five more seconds. Anybody else? Should, should, oh, it's a little of everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, girlfriend, tell us what it is. Okay, the lie is I love to crochet. I don't crochet. <laughs> Women's self-defense in my spare time when somebody asked me about it. Mm -hmm. And I do have two children getting married, one in July and one in August wow. this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm building a new house in September, in August. Wow. Crazy year. Crazy year. That sounds like a great year. And I sell jewelry. And you sell jewelry. <laughs> it's a good thing with two weddings going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, thank you so much. That was fun. All right, great idea to do the spotlight. We're getting better and better with every single mm -hmm. um, attempt. Okay, next one. Um, let's see. Mm. Amy Starr. Amy Starr, where are you? All right. I just saw you. Am I saying it out loud? Okay, all right, let me spotlight you. Hang on, and you can say them out loud because we're going to okay. watch. Am I, am I typing it too? Nope, you can just say it. Okay. All right. The first one is um, I once sang and danced with Michael Bublé. <laughs> the second one is um, when I was in high school, my cheer team that I was on won NCA nationals. 
And the third one is President Nixon once sang me a song. <laughs> oh my gosh. I told you I had good ones. <laughs> These are random. Wow. Let's go. Okay. What was, so let's what was it about President? What did you say? I'll type it. Okay. President Nixon sang her song. Oh. She, she sang and danced with Michael Buble mm -hmm. and her high school cheer squad won the national championship. All right, so it's a little of everything except the championship. Everybody believes that one, but nobody believes the Nixon one. Hmm. Okay, sang and danced. Cheer squad, Nixon sang to me. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Ready? Okay, go for it. Nixon actually did sing to me. <laughs> the one, the one that I and I did sing and dance with Michael Bublé. So the one that's not true is my high school cheer squad did not. What? Win. That is so funny. Goodbye. That is so. Uh -huh. funny. How, all right, I'll bite. How did Nixon sing to you? Um. So my element. So my <laughs> elementary school when I was a kid was Nixon Elementary School, huh. and it was having some sort of anniversary celebration, and he came. They invited him, and he oh. came. And um, it's actually kind of a funny story because I, I got to, my mom worked at the school at the time. So we got like a little private meet and greet. And um, so, you know, he asked me my name. I think I was in like, I don't know, sixth grade or something. And he asked me my name and I told him it was Amy. And he sang to me this song called Once in Love with Amy. It's this oh. really old song. <laughs> and I told him that my grandfather sang it to me and that he sang it better. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's my story. <laughs> so cute that's very cute i love that one i don't know who could top that one okay let's see let's let's pick another one um i'm looking around go to the second page let's see and it, and if you're not ready that's okay but let's go with rachel hudson cabrano oh no she's not she's not on screen is she is she able to come on screen is she ready no oh, okay how about heather weaver <laughs> all right oh heather you're muted oh. okay girl. okay i own a pet sitting business mm -hmm. i got married in a purple wedding dress i won a cindy lopper lookalike contest <laughs> oh. wow okay purple wedding dress cindy lopper lookalike and what was the first one? I own a pet sitting business. Oh, you own a pet sitting business. Hmm. It's a little of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. A little of everything. Pet sitting, purple dress. I'm really curious. <laughs> Anybody else? New offer. Okay. Which one is not true? Um, Cindy Locker. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, okay. although I did dress like her a lot. And, and when I was in high school, I was went to a school in a really small town. I moved from Florida to a small town in New York. And everybody called me Cindy Locker because they said I dressed like her. But I never did win a contest with her. <laughs> <laughs> that was just wishful thinking. That was very cute. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I like it. Okay, let's do one more real quick one. Um, go back to gallery. And I'm looking, looking. Okay. Seeing who's like, not looking too eager, kind of casual. <laughs> Amanda like can't stop smiling. So I think Amanda's got to go. <laughs> no, you don't want to. You don't have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there she goes. <laughs> All right, you have to unmute. Hello. No, I'm. everybody's just so amazing. It's pretty funny. Yeah, these are pretty yes. good. All right, what have you got, girl? Okay, my three are, um, I have lived in New York, Los Angeles, and Miami. I played field hockey in college, and I was the weather girl on the college TV station. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, weather girl, field hockey, and lived Living in, in New York, Los Angeles, and Miami, all the big three cities. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so far, it's all weather girl and field mm -hmm. hockey. They be, oh, one, Amy doesn't believe you about the cities. Oh, yep. The cities are coming into question. 
What does it mean when a lot of them don't believe that you could have been the weather girl? I don't know. I guess I'm not good on the camera or something. <laughs> field, field hockey, field hockey. Okay. Okay, I've never played a day of field hockey in my life. Uh, <laughs> I never played a game. I didn't even know how to play. But you were the weather girl. Oh, I was on our college <laughs> radio station. Yep. You were totally a weather girl is what Amy says. Oh, that's so funny. That's cute. <laughs> okay. That's very cute. Good. All right. Well, that was very good, ladies. I liked it. Um, all right. I think we learned a little bit of uh, new information about some of you, which is always fun. We could play this one again sometime too, because um, it's always really cute to hear all the creativity too, especially the surprises. Um, I want to um, very quickly recognize Patricia Peterski as our next little activity and uh, congratulate her on achieving the title of director, which is the third level in the leadership series, uh, leadership rank on our team. She hit that in the month of March. So congratulations to Patricia. We're really excited for you. It's a big deal when someone hits director. Uh, there are not a whole lot of directors and above in our company. So it's a big deal. And it means that she has at least two group leaders uh, in her organization who are sidelined to one another. So it is kind of a big deal. Patricia, where'd you go? I wanted to um, ask you one, just one quick or one quick question. I'm over here. There you are. Okay, I'm gonna spotlight you, your very favorite thing. Um, hey, there you are. So congratulations, we're really excited for you. It's just so great when one of our own, you know, pops up into the, the ranks with, within the company. Um, and when you started with us, um, Mm, what not quite two years ago two years ago, two right? years ago January yeah. 2019 what was your intention when you got started um honestly I didn't have much intention but um Liz <laughs> she was like come on you know she kind of showed me the numbers I'm a numbers person yes. and it made sense right I had she had a party at my house or I had a party at my house and I had over a thousand in sales so I was like, Liz, I don't need any more direct sales. I, I'm just about to quit one and I'm in the military. I'm so busy. The last thing I need is another direct sales um, business. And so she's like, well, you clean up. And while I pack up, you know, then we'll talk. And so we sat down, she showed me the numbers. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll try it. <laughs> I love it. And poor Liz has been stuck with me since. <laughs> Did you ever, uh, one last question, did you ever think about going into the leadership side of things with this and helping other women start their businesses when you first got no, started? Here? I mean, I didn't think it was possible and I didn't mm -hmm. think, um, I knew I had the leadership skills because of the military, mm -hmm. um, but I never, I don't know. I, it definitely wasn't in my vision. Um, right. I get that. Well, <laughs> congratulations to you. We are so excited. It's just great to see one of our own promoted out and uh, we're cheering you on to the next level of key director too, really soon, hopefully. hopefully. So way to go. Working hard, working hard. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's Thank great. You. So let's move on. And um, we've got a couple more things that we're going to do tonight. <clears throat> the first one is we want to show you something that we, that Terry and Jacqueline and I really love that we've been taught over the years um, and it seems like something that you all with, a, with so many parties on your calendars this month that you would really benefit from just seeing this big eye opener that, that we once saw for the first time and went, whoa, that's amazing. And then when we're done, we have a special guest who most of you have never met before, um, who'll be hopping on with us to, um, to talk to us a little bit about how to how we show up really matters and so um, i'm going to introduce you to a really good friend of mine in just a couple minutes so i'm going to share my screen and let terry start um diving in on this terry do you um do you mind no mm -mm. okay great and i'm going to find my find my the correct screen to actually share with you guys this might be it no that's not the one i was looking for it's okay i'll find it all right, let me share this screen anyway. I'm going to go back to, um, okay, there we go. We'll move Stacy away. Okay. Mm, and we're going to go to this. Okay, so okay. go ahead. I'll let, Terry, I'll let you start talking while I fiddle with this. Okay, so we we feel, especially now, I, I know as we talk to everybody, everyone's got so many things going on. 
And the best way for us to stay in this VIP group is to do our parties and get parties booked from our parties because it makes such a big difference. I don't know how many of you have ever had to go through booking your calendar away from your parties, me. And it's the worst part of the business, I will say. I hate it. I hate when I have to rebook my calendar because I didn't get parties booked at parties. So the key really to reach your goals, less stress, less time is to be able to get your parties booked at your parties. It makes such a huge difference. So if you're starting in month one with eight parties and you book one party at every party, so you start with eight, the, the numbers even virtually still don't lie. It's still usually one in four will cancel or postpone. So if you get one party booked, if you have eight, two will postpone or cancel. You'll hold six. That gives you six new parties. That's great, right? You go into month two in the month of May and you've got six. Two are going to postpone or cancel. You're going to hold four and you're going to get four new bookings. You go into month three with four, one cancels, three hold, three new bookings. Do you see where I'm going with this? Is that slowly we start to die out and it's so much harder because then we have to start all over and start booking again. It makes a big difference if we're getting two parties booked at every party. I don't know if you have that slide. Yeah. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two parties at every party. So if you start with eight, two postpone or cancel, you still have six. That gives you 12 new bookings. You go into month two with 12, three postpone or cancel, you hold nine. That's 18 new bookings. By the time you're done with month three, that's 26. Here's what happens when we are getting parties booked, everything else falls into place. Like I, I am going to guess that Patricia has a really great party count because she's sponsoring. When we don't have parties, we typically don't sponsor as much either because we're kind of worried about our parties, if I'm being totally honest. Mm -hmm. So when we have the party count, everything else falls into place. Everything. You're not as stressed about bookings. You're not stressed about offering the business because you're not afraid you're going to lose the business. How many of you have, have sponsored really well at some point, right? Or you are right now. Usually you have a good party count. You're like, thank God I'm sponsoring because I don't want to do all these parties. Mm -hmm. So that party count makes such a big difference. If you're not consistently getting parties booked at your parties, contact your upline leader. Ask her what she's doing for her booking game. The booking games work if you do them. And I will tell you, they're not always fun to do. You may not be comfortable at first, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. There are different versions. You don't have to do one specific version. You can change it up till it works for you. I would say give it four parties, but you have to do a booking game. It, it makes such a big difference. You will be so glad when you go into the first of the next month and your party count is fully booked. There's nothing better than coming up to May 1st and having your entire May booked and being able to book June. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It makes such a big difference. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks, Terry. Uh, these numbers are such eye openers. Um, the first time we saw this play out at a meeting, um, it, or it, it really convicted us of how, um, of how important this can be. And so if you have any thoughts about what you like to do to book parties from parties or something that you want to try, uh, something that you heard recently, go ahead and put it in the chat and other people can see what your ideas are too. And um, that would be great because it's, you know, the more ideas that we share, the better off it's going to be because we want every one of you back on um, for, uh, for, next, for next month because we're going to do, keep doing it again and again and again. All right. Well, thanks, Terry, for that. I really appreciate it. So, um, and you can, you can share those ideas in chat. So next thing, our, um, our highlight for this evening, I am so excited to welcome <clears throat> a really great friend of mine. She is a true friend. Her name is Robin Fennell. She is a wardrobe stylist and uh, she lives here in Northern Virginia. She's going to talk to us tonight about um, the topic is it's all in how you show up. It's all in how you show up is the name of her presentation. And um, Robin is um, a speaker, uh, a fashion advisor. She is a partner in the McLean Style Studio and she works with a couple of lines 
of clothing. And she has, uh, is, is uh, well, I'll, I'll let her tell you some of the fascinating roles that she is playing in and around the Washington area, it, both in fashion and in charity. And then she's got some really neat things that she's going to share with us um, tonight. So let's see if we can find Robin somewhere here. Robin, if you say hi, then I can. Oh, I think maybe she's mute. I know she's on. I just got to find yep. out. There she there. is. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was like, oh yeah, I'm muted. <laughs> oh, there you are. So Robin is, oh, you look beautiful. So Robin oh, is you. married with um, a grown son and a new dog. And Lexi came from Russia. Is that Kuwait. right? Kuwait. Wait, Kuwait. Oh my. And um, Lexi is a very good girl. And she's... <laughs> We're talking about you. <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> but Robin, th I just want to thank you so, so much for, for hopping on with us tonight. I, I have learned so much from you. I own a lot of clothing from your, um, from your studio. I know Jacqueline has a few pieces as well. And um, you have been such a loyal friend to me in business here in Northern Virginia. And I've just really appreciated knowing you. And I'm so excited for what you're going to share with us tonight. It's my pleasure uh, to be here. Um, just an FYI, I am properly blinged <laughs> my clip earrings. Ooh, yeah. So I have I have on all my um, my sparkle. All your goodies. That's great. Anyway, okay. Uh, I'm gonna put up a PowerPoint. Uh, give me one second to find it again. I'm gonna make you the co-host. You may not need that, but this I don't think I need it. it. Okay but I will need to see, use my glasses <laughs> periodically. It's either taking them on or put, taking them off or putting them on, isn't it? Oh, exactly. I know, okay. I know. Presenter view. Yeah. Okay, do you all see one screen or do you see everything? I see you. Oh, oh let me do screen share. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, come to oh, why won't it come up? Okay, let's try this one more time. Let's go to screen share first. Um, I think it's this one. There we go. And I love you in fuchsia. Oh, thank you. One of my favorite colors. Mine too. You. I think it looks better on you than on me, but I know you like me in navy blue, so that's what I wore tonight. Okay, do you all see a single slide or all of them? All. You see all of them? Huh? Okay, if you give me one more second, it'll make it a lot easier and probably a little more pleasant there we go. if I do this the proper way. As you know, I am a creative. I am not a technical expertise. <laughs> um, now, where's my Zoom? There you go. No. Robin, when you had your slideshow up, uh -huh. it went to the bottom, um, bottom left. When you clicked on your slideshow, there's like a little presentation button that you would just click it and it would show us the whole slide. Bottom okay. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, the bottom right, yeah. Bottom right. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. her left, my right. <laughs> Go back to Go back to Let me slide. stop share for a second. Okay. Um, you said presentation? Right yes, yeah, so when you have the presentation the movie the screen on the bottom slides, you would just have to go to the bottom right and there's like a little presentation icon that you looks like a, a little movie screen. Yeah. You uh, still yeah, you still do share screen, but then at the bottom. Yeah, I think in you your PowerPoint share presentation. Screen and then click it because I of think what I did. Oh. oh, wait a minute. What happened here? OK, now let me go to. Presenter view. I think this will do it. There it is. I just had it on the wrong. I have two computer screens up. Okay. Uh, one so that I can see and one that you just see one. Okay. And I guess it'd be nice if we started at the beginning. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in the retail world my entire life or at least since 12, when I worked in my grandfather's store selling coveralls, overalls, blue jeans, and that kind of thing. It was a work clothing store. And then um, I went to the Fashion, uh, Fashion Institute of America, got a degree in fashion merchandising, 
I've worked in a major department store as a manager. Um, and then I kind of got tired of working all the holidays, Saturday nights, you name it. And I got out of retail for a while. We moved to the DC area in 1994. I had a small child. Uh, we were living in temporary housing because we couldn't find a house. And one day I took him to the Washington Women's Show at the old DC Convention Center. And I ran across an organization called Suited for Change. Suited for Change provides clothing and soft skills for women coming out of all sorts of situations. It could be um, a halfway house, it could be jail, it could be just unemployment, um, homeless, whatever their unfortunate circumstances are. And um, I knew that this was where I needed to uh, spend, volunteer my time. So a couple of months after I started working there, I had a particular client who came in and I thought she was homeless because she had on several layers of clothing and it really wasn't that cold outside. She told me what she was interviewing for and at the moment I don't remember because it was 26 years ago. But we picked out this beautiful cobalt blue wool suit and I gave it to her and sent her in the dressing room. Well, she popped right back out. There were long johns hanging out, all sorts of layers. And it took me a really long time to convince her that we needed to see what this suit looked like without all the layers underneath. She finally comes out, she goes in front of a mirror and she starts crying. She said she never thought she could look this way again. And I saw a, trans, uh, a transformation come over her. Her head was a little higher, her shoulders held, were held back. And she said, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to get my hair done. And that's when I knew I had fallen in love and found my um, calling. Yes, it's been a really tough 14 months, but in fact, you still can look authoritative. You still can look put together in front of a computer. Tony Robbins says the way you look reflects your standards. And whether you know it or not, there's psychology of professional image. Image influences people's opinions. Your clothing is a visual resume because it is the first thing that people see. And the first impression is most important because we are natural judges. Our human brain cannot help but make a connection between the image that they're looking at and any familiar past experiences and then making a judgment. There's actually an expectation for the visual image to match whatever that intellectual image is and we make it in less than 10 seconds. 65% of the world's population are visual learners. They take their cues through their eyes. Others, you all can't hear me, can't you? We can. Yeah, we can. Okay, good. I just, you know, I didn't want to go through the whole presentation and then go, <laughs> oh, you were on mute or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, so. 65% are visual learners. There's also auditory learners, uh, people who take their cues in through their ears and kinesthetic learners who learn through movement. But that basically means that almost seven out of every 10 people are visual learners. And visual people are naturally attracted to balance. They don't like their eyes going all over the place. And when your clothing is balanced, then the attention of the observer naturally focuses on your face and not elsewhere. This may in fact help your level of confidence. Now, we all have these perceived flaws. Our chest is too small, our butt is too big. I'm not gonna go through the whole list. Um, we all can beat up each on e ourselves probably better than anybody else can. And the nice thing about all of this, though, is that we can create balance or symmetry. And it's all about illusion. I'm going to go over the five body types. The first one I'm going to talk about is the triangle because it's the one I'm most familiar with. I've lived with it for more years than I'm willing to share at the moment. 
And that is that I am two sizes smaller on top than I am on the bottom. And so I have to create a way to balance that so that the eye doesn't focus on the bottom and instead moves up to the top. The second body type is an inverted triangle. And that's gonna be somebody with broader shoulders and or a big bust and skinny hips. That's going to be a balance that's kind of the opposite of the, the triangle. Then we go into an oval. An oval tends to have narrow shoulders, a larger middle and smaller hips. And ovals tend to have fabulous arms and great legs. There's the rectangle, your typical athletic body where there's not a true defined waist, you're pretty much straight up and down. And then there's the hourglass, the shoulders, and the hips are the same with a defined waist. Now, none of them are better than others. It's just a matter of how you dress them. This will give you a better um, idea in re real time uh, of the various body shapes. When I work with clients, and I guess I didn't tell you all this, but I, do, I represent four lines. I'll share with them at the end of the slideshow. But I take a lot of things into consideration. And one of them is body type when we're choosing clothing. Something else I take into consideration is hair color and skin tone. And skin tone is really important. And there's three types. There's cool, there's warm, and there's neutral. And whether you're African American, um, Hispanic, uh, Caucasian, you still have a skin tone. Warm color, warm skin tones tend to look better with cool colors and cool color skin tones tend to look better with warm colors. If you've ever been in a situation where you thought you were feeling really good and somebody came up to you and said, bad night's sleep, don't feel good today. It could be the color you're wearing is draining the color from your face. Conversely, you could feel kind of eh, and somebody says, wow, you look fabulous today. It could be because the color that you're wearing is really brightening you up. There's a number of shades of red. There's a number of shades of pink, blue, green, and there's the right shade for every skin tone. Something else I take into consideration is personal style. Are you a classic, a romantic, modern or edgy, bohemian, artsy? And are you creative or adventurous? These are some classic lines. Romance, they like lace and flowers and loose flowy fabrics and ruffles and bows. Bohemian, back to the 60s. Modern or edgy, they want the latest, the greatest, and they wanna show and stand out. And then you have your artistic creatives. They're gonna put things together that not everybody would do, but think of your graphic designers, your architects, um, interior designers, artists, creatives. So what image do you wanna project? Your clothes are gonna speak for you. So you wanna make sure they know what to say. Also, does your look convey the expert that whoever it is you're working with is looking for? So who would you hire if you need a lawyer for whatever reason? They probably both graduated from Harvard, but which one's gonna look better in front of a judge? Which one looks like they're more successful? Every time I go to see my financial advisor, he takes us into the big conference room. Of course, there's just two of us and him, but what he's trying to do is convey to me, you know, that he's got this beautiful wood space and he makes sure that I can see the initials 
on his shirt sleeves. He's conveying to me that he is so successful that he can afford to put his initials on all his shirts. Also need to think about your audience because they change. Are they prospective clients? Are you in a board meeting? Are you head of the board? Is there an existing dress code in the company or wherever you're going? Where is it, a warm climate, cool climate? Is this a job interview? Are you making a presentation? And if so, to who? Do you want to impress or blend in? And of course, there's all sorts of levels within an organization. And my suggestion is always to address at least like the next level up so that you look like the obvious choice to move up in the organization. And maybe one day you'll be the boss and get to dictate what that is. Some examples of classic business attire. And there's business formal, there's business, business casual. Um, I just wanted to give you a few ideas. And this kind of gives you a better idea of a chart. Although I'm not sure the difference between smart casual and business casual, they look very similar. I could see them in either place. And I always suggest buying better, fewer quality items than a lot of poor quality. There's an 80-20 rule. We tend to wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Our favorite black pants, our favorite black suit. And I say black because that tends to be what so many people um, call for. But, and black is not always the best color. They're, black can wash you out. And a really great substitute is a nice navy. And of course, accessories. I hope I'm hearing a lot of applause um, because Accessories are the icing on the cake. And of course, some great pairs of shoes, a great pair of shoes. It doesn't have to be a heel, although a heel will give you a more authoritative look. Um, just want to make sure it's a business shoe. Remember, I said almost seven out of every 10 people are visual learners. I'm not making a political statement here. But Michelle Obama kind of gave the American woman permission to bear her arms. And depending upon the situation, should you? If you watch the nightly news, um, the male broadcaster is in a suit, a tie, and pretty much the only skin you see is his head and his hands. Um, I've seen female broadcasters with a low plunging V, I see arms, I see head. And sometimes what happens is that my eye travels it's in that, that direction instead of actually listening to what she has to say. That may not be true for everybody, but I do think it's true for visual learners. What is the solution? Simply a jacket. A jacket takes the eye away from the arms and puts you the focus back onto the face. My suggestion is to always have a great fitting jacket. And that is one that is fitted to you. It may be that the sleeves need to be raised up a half an inch or lowered a half an inch. And the best way to do that is to use a fabulous alterations person. Remember I said getting dressed is all about illusion. And you know, some of us don't feel like we have any flaws. Some of us can pick ourselves to get, pick ourselves apart like nobody's business. But I wanted to show you in this particular picture, and I have not been able to find one with a woman in it, of how the gentleman who is an oval shape has been transformed into looking taller, looking broader through his shoulder, they nipped in his waist and then they flared out the bottom of that jacket just a little bit to give him height and make him look thinner. With women, the woman on the right, she looks fantastic in that dress. 
But in a business situation, if she had bought that dress one size bigger, it would have just skimmed her body instead of hugging her body and she would have looked more professional. The woman on the left, obviously the dress is too big and she looks bigger than she actually is. This is another really good example of how our eye plays tricks on us when you wear baggy clothes. Of course, I'm a sucker for grooming. A, a fresh hairstyle and every three weeks, I've, uh, and thank goodness the pandemic, I shouldn't say is over, but I'm vaccinated and I feel a little more comfortable going and getting some things taken care of now. So every three weeks, my eyebrows and my lip gets waxed. I know I'm going through this quickly because I wanna leave some time for questions. Something else to take into consideration are distractions. Um, shoes not being perfectly cleaned or polished. Um, artsy nail polish can be um, distracting. A sleeveless dress, and once again, that's a decision that you have to make. Underwear lines. I couldn't tell you how many times I've spent time meeting someone, really making a connection, and then they get up to walk away, and the last thing I see are panty lines. It really does kind of kill the whole thing. And cleavage. We can't help ourselves but being drawn to look because we were taught that that's something that's private. So in a business situation, it's always best to cover up. And of course, perfume or cologne, there's so many allergies these days. As a stylist, I work with people on their clothing. I have a pocket full of experts because you do not want me styling and cutting your hair. You don't want me putting on your makeup or doing your grooming services. But I do know a lot of great um, experts that can do those services. So a quick recap, how you dress is your visual resume. Your hair color and skin tone determine your best colors. Know your body type and what clothing pieces are most flattering, and I'm glad to answer questions about that. Stay true to your personal style, especially if you're doing something really important. If you're a classic and you want to try a bohemian style, don't do it when there's something important and you need to keep your confidence level because it could really put you on shaky ground. People are attracted to balance, and you can create it. Know your audience and dress accordingly because remember, they can be different and avoid distractions. My goal is to always maximize my client's confidence meter so that they do feel like they're on the runway of life. So you still can look really authoritative in front of a computer and hopefully in the next few months, we're gonna put that computer to rest for a while and get out and spend some time with each other. The four lines that I, I represent are Carlisle and et cetera. They're sister companies uh, designed out of New York. They're made from high level Italian, French, um, Portuguese, Peruvian fabrics. Also Sarah Flint shoes. Sarah Flint used to sell to Barney's and Neiman Marcus and um, Saks. And she decided to go out on her own and cut her prices almost in half. Sarah has her training over in Italy. She's a graduate from the P Parsons Design School and then actually worked in the Manolo Blahnik factory learning how to make top end uh, women's shoes. And then she talks about the fact that when she specifies her shoes, she has them put in extra padding and they go, no, that's not how you make designer shoes. And she goes, no, that's how I make my designer shoes. And then the last company that I represent is Duet New York City. And I just picked that up um, in January. And it's a line of black basics made from sustainable fabrics that are machine washable, hang dry, and wear again. 
These are the websites. If you wanted to go on and take a look, this is my contact information. Uh, feel free to pull out your camera and take a picture if you'd like. Betsy has my information as well. And I'm glad to answer any questions. As soon as I figure out how to get back on camera. Uh, can you I show that contact page one more time? Sorry. Um, I can, if you'll give me a second. And I can also um, share. Is that got it? Not quite. No, no. okay, I need to, hold on. Um, slideshow. Is that got it? Yes. I really do need my own personal AV person. <laughs> we all learn as we go, Robin. It's just you know, I think I've done this four times and I still struggle. <laughs> okay, so the first question comes from Chantil and she's posting in the, in the chat. And she says, what are the best clothes for people that are big on the bottom and small on the top? Okay, well, that's me. <laughs> um, Ideally, you want to wear something darker on the bottom and brighter on the top. I am a fan of white pants, though, in the summertime, so I do break my rules periodically. Um, but a pair of nice black slacks, preferably not something that hugs your thighs. Uh, quite often, um, triangles are pairs, are thigh heavy, so their thighs are even wider than their hips. And so you want to be able to balance that. Um, something that will widen your shoulders, a V-neck works, padded shoulders or a blazer with um, inset sleeves, um, floral or a print on top, anything that draws the eye up. Also a statement necklace, um, something you all are fabulous at. Um, I did not wear one today because there's a tie on my sweater but anything that will draw the eye up. Does that help? That was good, let's see. So Marisa said, oh, uh, Amy says, for colors, do you go with, oh, do you base it on your natural hair color or whatever your color is at the moment? So she's naturally dark brown, but most of the time she's blonde. This is Amy. Um, what I would say is, Skin tone is even more important. Um, I'm assuming that you choose a hair color that matches your skin tone. Um, you know, take Katie Nelson, for instance. Katie's hair right now is lavender, mm -hmm. but it goes beautifully with her skin tone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying everybody needs to go out and get lavender hair. Um, but what you want is to make sure that the hair, that color that you choose, you know, as you get older, you get gray, you want to cover it, whatever, you know, works with your skin tone. A real easy way to determine whether you are um, warm or cool is to take bright white and put it under your chin. You can even take something and just make all the hair go away so that that doesn't play a part and then take bright white and also say an off-white and look and see which one makes you shine better if it's bright white you've got cool undertones if it's off-white you've got warm undertones and most people look uh, better in one or the other there are some people who have neutral skin tones and they can pretty much wear any color they want. I only wish that were me, but I know which ones will really generally make me look dead. <laughs> so Marisa asks, what if you don't know what your body type is? Take a measuring tape, measure your bust, Measure your shoulders, measure your waist, 
Measure your hips, measure your thighs. Plot it out on a piece of paper and then just kind of take the lines. Now a rectangle can have a small indentation in the waist. They are not absolutely perfectly rectangular, but they don't have a defined waist like an hourglass does. But that'll give you a pretty good idea. Okay, let's see. Okay, Debbie has a great question. I love this because I have issues with this. What if you have arthritis in your feet so you can't wear any cute shoes, but basically loafers or black sneakers. So you want to draw the attention up and um, let's see, wait. And, and, and if, if you're more on the heavy side and you're yet you're drawing the attention up, what are you drawing your attention to to get away from the shoes and the body type that maybe we're not happy with? I would say whatever fits beautifully on the upper part of your body you know, if it's a great V-neck um, and then a statement necklace, very few people are going to pay attention to your shoes other than maybe when you're walking in the room. You know, we can't help ourselves. You know, we do the whole up and down thing when we look at people, mm -hmm. but it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, look at that fabulous necklace or great hairstyle or those colors are fantastic. You know what I'm saying? So that gives you an idea. Um, Maybe there's some cute sneakers. Maybe there's, you know, some great loafers. Or maybe there's a loafer with a sparkly thing that you can put on, you know, what are the, the little buckle things that you can put on your shoes or something? Yeah. Hey, there's an idea for touch. <laughs> there you go. That's cute. Sparkle, sparkle clips for your shoes. <laughs> I love that. It could even put it in with your sneakers you know, through the laces or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. anything like that. Let's see. Deb McNally. Although you don't, let me re finish. Um, you yep. don't want people to stare at your feet the whole time. That's true. Good point. I'm looking here to see what other questions we've got. Oh, Amy wants to know what's, what's your favorite touchstone piece? I already know. Oh, these. absolutely. The, um, the <laughs> <Yeah>. bracelets. <laughs> I have three clear, three black. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have a pink one. Um, I tend not to wear colorful jewelry as Betsy knows. Mm -hmm. I buy the same crystal, the same pearls, the same black all the time. And why is that? Um, because I tend to wear bright colors mm -hmm. and that, that, that works better. Right. And if I wear a white blouse, I tend not to remember to put something colorful with it. I'll put the black or the, you know, it's just right. habit. Yeah. Deb McNally says, my mom always said that being overdressed was better than being underdressed, especially, especially if you don't know the dress code and it's still, exactly. is, it, is that still true in our casual time? She Absolutely. Um, I'm actually surprised that slide wasn't in there. Um, I probably, because I do this you know, for a number of organizations and I pull and, you know, insert and take out slides as um, necessary. And I actually thought that slide was in there, but when in doubt, overdress. When in doubt, overdress. I keep trying to tell my kids that and in their twenties and they're still not listening to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, well, like my son's khaki pants that, you know, looks like he slept in them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not like those. Exactly. Okay. We have one last question for you, Robin. This has been so great. I wish we could just keep you. All right. So um, Heather says, um, what about blazers and skirts and pants? And if they're not a part of a suit, should they be the same color or not like a black blazer with a different black skirt? Is it okay to mix and match different things that are the same color, but not from the same suit necessarily? It can be distracting. Mm -hmm. Ideally, if you're going to get, um, you're going to want a suit feel free to break it apart. But if you buy the pieces that match, then you've got that column look, which is always more slimming um, and your eyes don't go to the different textures of fabric. I mean, if you had a black blazer and a black tweed skirt, you know, that's great because then it, you know, the colors kind of blend in together. Um, I would say, you know, choose navy and black then, which is very French. Um, or, 
you know, black and maybe another color. That's great. And if that doesn't answer, you know, I'm glad to keep, you know, talk to you more. That's sweet. Well, Robin, we thank you. I feel like you're a part of our, you're an honorary member of our Sparkly Sisterhood. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was my we, pleasure. We so appreciate you being on. I really, really, really appreciate it. Hey, I wonder if it, um, if you would do one, do you have uh, just a moment to stay with us to help us draw winners? We have uh, three winners that we're going to draw names of tonight. And I, I, sure. I have someone to, to tell me three numbers um, so that we can actually share um, share three prizes that we're going to be giving away. Awesome. Lexi, do you want to help? Lexi's going to help. Lexi, Lexi. Count. She comes all the way from Kuwait and she's going to be counting. Uh, I'm going to have to grab her. <laughs> Come here, sweetie. Oh, what a big girl. Oh, what a big girl. Yeah. She says, I'm tired. Oh, cute. So the first prize tonight is going to be, uh, let's see, here we go. Can y'all see this? It's actually not a good picture of it. Sorry, hold on, let me get the other picture. There we go. Okay. The first prize that we're giving away tonight is uh, Swarovski. No, Swarovski's crystal studded notebook. And um, what I need from Robin is for you to pick a number between one and 27. One and 27? Yeah. 17. Okay. Now I got to count fast. 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. And number 17 is Missy Becker. Where'd she go? Where's Missy? Congratulations, Missy. You won the black notebook. The second prize winner wins the white version of the Swarovski notebook. And okay, Robin, I need another number between one and 27. Three. Three. And number, see, I have them all written down here. Number three is Fran. Congratulations, Fran. Hooray, hooray. Way to go. All right, and we have one last grand prize. And the winner of this grand prize, um, is uh, I'm gonna get I'm going to give I'm gonna get a number in just a second from Robin. I want to show you all the picture. Sorry, it's really hard for me to do all these things all at once. Okay. Um, so we have a slightly different scenario. Oh, and there goes Stacy. She's still sitting there. So our is uh, our grand prize is the Swarovski Aviator sunglasses. The prize winner for the Swarovski Aviator Sunglasses, um, as soon as she can uh, submits her four parties, see, here we go, got lists everywhere. Stop share, there we go. Okay, list everywhere. Um, as soon as she submits her four parties, those sunglasses are coming right to her. So the winner of the Swarovski Aviator Sunglasses, I need a number between one and 27. 11. 11. And the winner is Catherine Melusin. Congratulations, Catherine. Way to go, girl. You're going to look fabulous in those sunglasses. That is great. Terry, do you have any last words that you would like to say before we get going? I know Jacqueline had to hop off. So um, she said her goodbyes to everyone before she had to leave. She has a busy week. Well, Robin, I just want to thank you again. That was super helpful. I'm always looking for fashion tips and it's really nice to hear those tips and give us pictures to go along with it. So I really appreciate it. I know we all do. And um, I just want to congratulate everybody for being VIP happy hours, earning this. And we would love to know before you hang up, if there's something you would like to see on a future VIP happy hour, mm -hmm. if there's a topic you want covered, if there's something fun that you want to do, we would love, love if you would just type in the chat before you hang up, anything that you think might be fun for future happy hours. Okay. And thanks again, Robin and Lexi, and thanks, Terry, and thanks to all of you. Have a great evening. Oh, I appreciate you all. Can you uh, stop recording? Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thanks.